The trial of former crypto tycoon Sam Bankman-Fried got underway this week as the one-time billionaire now faces fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering charges. Before SBF's cryptocurrency exchange FTX imploded in one of the biggest financial collapses in American history, famed author and journalist Michael Lewis was already embedded in the company. He's now telling that story in his new book, Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon, and Michael Lewis, kind enough to join you. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Let's start with the idea that Sam has has entered a plea of not guilty to the idea that he has misused clients' funds for his own personal projects and finances. But you have this nearly $9 billion that's missing that was funneled through his hedge fund, Almeda Research. After all the time that you've spent with him, do you feel that he knowingly committed fraud? I just wrote 250 pages avoiding answering that question <laughs> and just telling the story because I want the reader to answer that question. Mm -hmm. So I want to answer that question. But I will say this, it's more complicated than what you just said. So there was eight that you talked to the bankruptcy people, they've released this stuff. Uh, $8.6 billion of customer deposits are missing. And they've already located 7.3 billion in liquid assets. And they're sitting on a pile of other stuff that's worth easily another billion. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much is actually missing in the end. You write, it didn't cross Natalie's mind who was working with him and knew him for quite a bit of time, uh, to feel even a, a tiny bit irritated with Sam. She could never be upset with him for the mess he left for her to clean up because she knew that he never intended to make a mess. He has made a, a bit of a mess. <laughs> at, a bit of a mess. <laughs> at, 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 at this point, I, I think yeah, it's yeah, fair to say. Yeah. And then it go, you go on to say, if she herself didn't fully understand Sam, how could anyone? Do you feel that you got to, to fully understand Sam when most people failed or, or struggled to at best? So when I think about understanding a person, it's always complicated, right? You never know what's going on inside of people. But I think, it, can you predict what they're going to do? Can you predict what they're going to say? Do you have some predictive power about them? And I developed a lot of that. I mean, I can't predict everything he's going to do, but I have a pretty good sense of him. There are critics, as you know, who, who say that you've been too sympathetic to Sam. Do you feel they're wrong? I think they're crazy. And there are two stories. The defense is offering one and the prosecution is offering another. I have a completely different one with lots of other stuff that they haven't, they're not mentioning that leaves the reader with the possibility of thinking lots of different things. The, in this case, it's been very interesting to me to see just like the lynch mob mentality, very quick rush to judgment when it all fell apart, mm. very quick movement by the prosecution. And I think a lot of people are certain about what happened when they don't actually know what happened. One thing you seem to be certain of, at least in a recent interview, you said this was not a Ponzi scheme. How can you be so sure? Well, I mean, there's a definition of a Ponzi scheme, right? A Ponzi scheme is when the dollars coming in are coming in to pay off uh, the it, f f kind of phony returns to investors who are going out the door. And F FTX itself, so this is complicated. There are two businesses, Alameda Research, which is his hedge fund, which he started first. And out of that came FTX. And FTX was a pretty simple business. It was an exchange. And the way they made money was not by betting. They made money by taking a little piece of the bets other people made. Like, that itself was a gold mine. I mean, venture capitalists, he had 150 venture capitalists who invested in the thing, and they'd valued it at like $40 billion. The problematic part of the thing, which was totally unnecessary, was this hedge fund he had on the side, this legacy business. And that's where the losses occurred. And, and didn't really have anything to do with FTX. You've recently pushed back on comparisons between him and Elizabeth Holmes, obviously the founder of Theranos. And you said specifically that she was supplying phony medical information to people that might kill them while he was, quote, possibly losing some money that belonged to crypto speculators in the Bahamas. But do you acknowledge that there was potentially some harm? Oh, no, no, of course. Of course. Okay. I, I'm a creditor. He took my money. He's up mixed up in that. So yes, of course, of course. But you know, if you want to do degrees of harm, I think there's a little, it's a little different. And I also think you got can't ignore the fact that these people might get 100, 100 cents back on the dollar. They're going to get something back. And the thing I don't even really want to speculate about, and what, but the the system of justice has to sort of grapple with is intent, and that, that's that's the tricky part. Nobody disagrees that like the money was in the wrong place. It's sort of like it's not a and, and we know who did it. It's sort of like how and why he done it. it. You write, 
of him that he wrote one day, I don't feel pleasure. I don't feel happiness. Somehow my reward system's never clicked. My highest highs, my proudest moments come and pass as I feel nothing but the aching hole in my brain where happiness should be. He goes on to write, I don't feel anything or at least anything good. I don't feel pleasure or love or pride or devotion. I feel the awkwardness of the moment enclosing on me, the pressure to react appropriately, to show that I love them back, and I don't because I can't. Yeah. Do you think he feels bad about this whole situation? Or does he have the ability to? I don't know if he has the ability to. Mm. I mean, I think it's just how he's wired. It's not like this is not a, it's not a it, this isn't a moral choice. It's sort of like how he came out. His parents, when he was very little, I think their parents, his friends would, their, their friends would say they were kind of afraid for him and of him. They didn't know how he was going to make his way in the world. Certainly uh, fascinating uh, all around, yeah. the, the character of Sam and, and the book that, that you've written here. Michael Lewis, always a pleasure to yeah. talk to you. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. I want our viewers to know that his new book, Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon, is now available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.